For years, there was nothing more smug than an Apple user that told you, there's no way you can hack into my Apple device. They're incredibly secure. And yes, to some degree, Apple products are quite secure. But that doesn't mean they're invulnerable to hacks. In fact, Google has unveiled a hack that's been around on Apple products for a really, really long time to explain what it is. We have Ariel Bogle, ABC technology reporter, and from GovHack, Peter Marks. Um, I have an iPhone. Tell me, has it been hacked, Peter Marks? Just in the past week, the Google Project Zero group, which tries to find what are called zero-day exploits. So I should explain that. Mm. A zero-day is uh, some sort of security exploit in some software that you can exploit, but the manufacturer, the maker, has not got a fix for yet. So it's the first day, it means you're up for it. So this actually was dates back a few months, but only was announced last week. And it was an exploit that was on some websites. And simply by visiting the website on an iPhone, running a range of operating systems, and this has been out from in the wild for some time, it would install some software on your phone just by, it's like a drive-by. You only have to open it up in Safari and you would have software installed on your phone that exfiltrated a ton of data. So it was things like your contacts, your photos, your messages, including messages in things like WhatsApp, which are encrypted. It would also put a beacon in there that reported back your position to a command and control server. Really nasty backdoor, and it's been out there for several years. And also, they necessarily haven't come up with a solution for it either, have they, Peter? At least not publicly. Oh, no, actually, it has been fixed. It was fixed in 12.1.4, which shipped back in February. And that was the release that fixed a very embarrassing uh, group FaceTime bug. If you added (laughs) someone to uh, a group FaceTime chat, it would connect them in and turn their camera on straight away. So it's horrendous. Basically, Ah, without doing anything, yeah, yeah, your camera would be on and your video would be being broadcast. At what point do we think organisations should be public and clear about when they uh, even fix these things, Ariel? It raises a whole range of interesting questions about Apple in general, because not only was Apple in the past the safe one, you know, iOS and Macs were the safe product compared to the Windows or the um, Android ecosystem. Apple also used to be quite confined geographically to countries like the United States Mm. or Australia or the UK. But as they've pushed into China and other countries, they're coming up against Really hostile actors, I suppose. I mean, not not to give um, the American government or even the Australian government um, carte blanche here. They mm. also have been aggressively hacking plenty of things. But Apple has to deal with this. And a few years ago, you might remember Google pulled out of China when it found out its systems had been hacked by the government targeting um, human rights activists in China. They were able to pull out as a reaction to that. I don't think we'll see Apple pulling out of China and not selling iPhones there anymore as a result of this exploit, if the exploit is in fact tied to targeting of Uyghur Muslims. Yeah, it's also a side effect of Apple's dominance now. It used to be that Windows had 95% of the computing Mm. market and so when people wanted to hack someone, they would make a hack for Windows and they would target it. Now Apple dominates in the phones. And actually, it's partially because Apple is a monoculture Everyone runs the same iOS on pretty much the Apple on the Apple hardware. They have to. Mm. Whereas Android is actually quite fragmented. There's many different bits of hardware. You're not just hacking Google's Android software. You're also hacking whatever Samsung does to it and all of the other makers do to it as well. So it's a more fragmented thing. And that's the shocking thing about this exploit is that it lasted for perhaps three years because everyone was running the same software. Another thing is that Apple demands that all web browsers run WebKit, the Safari code. So even if you have Chrome or Firefox Mm. on iPhone, you're actually still running Safari. And that's where this exploit or three of these exploits were. They were in the Safari code that was being run by all browsers. So it's a monoculture and that's risky. I could see an argument for why you would want to just fix it and not publicise it. But then... By not telling people, you're 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 sort of doing a disservice to your sort of potentially quite vulnerable customers. Yeah, so it's the way most uh, security researchers work is they'll notify the maker and they'll say, okay, we've found a zero-day exploit in your software. We're telling you about it and you now have a certain amount of time before we'll go public with it. And that's how Project Zero at Google also works. And so they did let Apple know. The analysis that's been done by Google is amazing. It's it, 
goes, it's a hugely deep analysis of how the bugs worked, of what data they got out. But I think at first to Apple, all it would have looked like is some sort of minor crash. So Apple would have been receiving some telemetry from phones saying, gee, they go to this website and the browser somehow crashes. It's actually very subtle. It was a, they start off a whole lot of JavaScript threads and in certain circumstances it would crash and they would let them get a privilege escalation. And so it would have been quite subtle. Something's going on, but they didn't know what. Now, in the full light of day and this analysis has been done, we know how serious it was that not only was all of the contacts of those people visiting the site been given up to the command and control server, but also they were left beaconing their location back to that server. So as you say, it's horrendous. Apple so far, as far as I know, hasn't said anything publicly about it. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting that Apple has so far been so silent when Google published like a seven page yeah, and it's um, really dossier. great analysis yeah. yeah exploits for iOS for current versions like zero day exploits are they used by things like the um, the Israeli hackers who can crack a phone mm. root a phone and get all the data out of it so they sell them for huge amounts of money to police forces around the world so wait, 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 wait. so so there are if yeah, I find just, a just hack I find a me. way to to root a phone to get into the phone and read everything on it I can sell that for it used to be a million dollars to people who want to build these tools for typically for law enforcement to be able to get into to locked phones. Now, Apple at Black Hat this year, the, the security conference in Las Vegas, did up their game. They're offering uh, prizes to people who come forward and show exploits. So basically they're saying, we will pay, in fact, I think it was a million dollars, we'll pay up to a million dollars if you can do certain things. And they're also offering debug hardware, which can be given out to researchers who are known to them. So they are starting to, to up their game. All right, there's lots more of this in the podcast. So download this show and I'll be back next time. Bye. 